uh, today we'll be, we'll basically discuss uh, uh, we'll basically discuss the relation between numpy scipy matplotlib and pyplot uh, first of all uh, why we go for numpy uh, why not what is the difference with c array uh, because uh, python doesn't have c array python in the contrast to have a list and list is very inefficient with maybe 100 is okay but if it is a 1000 it is better to import numpy uh, what is the advantage of numpy with array array is not been in c uh, the advantage of numpy is you can uh, tell the which what kind of data type whether it is unsigned data type whether signed data type whether unsigned integer uh, 8 bit uh, or unsigned uh, signed uh, 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit 64 bit 120 bit so you can uh, very precisely uh, pinpoint uh, what kind of data type is a uniform data type and that that is more powerful i found in c array c does c array also is not so much powerful uh, but most of the characteristics are same with the uh, c array there is a contiguous memory location uh, in a in a memory and so that you can uh, quickly uh, quickly uh, reach there with the index number that is not possible with c with list with Python list because uh, they are varying degrees. Any list items can be anything, integer, float, uh, string, like this. So that is the basic uh, uh, basic uh, of NumPy. So uh, others advanced packages like SciPy or Matplotlib, uh, they are built upon NumPy. So so SciPy is a more scientific computation using the NumPy array. So they are using basically NumPy. And uh, later on, we might discuss what is the difference between NumPy and Tensor. We will discuss, and then the it is come Matplotlib. Matplotlib is uh, invented in 2003 uh, by John Hunter. It is a why is it not, is it, why is a Matplotlib? Why is a peculiar name? It is not with Pi. I think you can guess. Uh, those who have come from electronics, I think Sijuni can tell that it is basically a copy of MATLAB. So, MATLAB is very powerful package uh, developed by uh, doctorates, uh, very good uh, scientists of MIT library, MIT lab, uh, the, even MIT lab Matplotlib is the standard, even some of the courses the Matplotlib is the standard. The Matplotlib is very efficient, very professional um, software, but the only negative point in our country is it is not, it is a license you have to require, a license is pretty costly. So, what is the poor man's Matplotlib? There are Octave is there, uh, Andrew Yang has developed, then Scilab is there, but their performance wise uh, less than Matplotlib. Uh, so, Matplotlib, yes, why, why I am uh, left? The Matplotlib is very powerful tool for visualization, for visualization on any various charts and all these things. So, uh, before that, there are some uh, plotting function in uh, Python, but that is not that good. Uh, some John Hunter, they copied it from the Matplotlib, uh, Mat Matlab and they put a package and which can work on any operating system and a Python, then the Matplotlib born in 2003 and then the later on the lot of astronomers and uh, nuclear scientists use this Matplotlib to the plotting the data because the Matlab is uh, not everywhere available and so, so Matplotlib is pretty good. And then the comes another uh, uh, 2000 uh, later, there is another uh, visualization tool has come, uh, Seaborn, uh, uh, that I will discuss. Uh, uh, but the Matplotlib and SNS, whatever you do, these are basically the Python packages and visual statistical visualization they are used for. And statistical visualization still now to my knowledge is R language is pretty good. Uh, so, but uh, Python is catching up, uh, R visualization is very good. So that is it. So what I wish to discuss the uh, quickly you go through the python syntaxes and uh, some syntaxes you will forget no issue, uh, but uh, uh, try to yes, uh, yes uh, some information you might to go uh, some, some information you might lose. Uh, I think you are getting my me no anyone please can say you are you getting my voice. Yes. Yes, sir. The, the video will be available on my YouTube. 
Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Great. So that is the thing. The Python uh, commands and all these things uh, I found it's pretty easy and only very something. And then quickly go through the NumPy and this. Uh, then the Sivon. These are the two visualization tools and NumPy and Pandas. Then you can handle the good data set and then you will be ready to attack the problem in the machine learning. So, machine learning in Python is the only one choice. I think there is no choice, there is no competition for Python there. So, in traditional programming framework, if you want to say I want to make it a Android package, then Python is not suitable. I will recommend Kotlin or Java or Flutter. So, but Python is absolutely number one in for any machine learning or deep learning. So, Python is meant for it. So, uh, quickly grasp through this, uh, this uh, basic thing subjects. Yeah, I am going to the next slide. Yeah, I think this I have already covered in one of my YouTube videos uh, around 2-3 weeks back after this. Uh, this is what is NumPy, it is array oriented computing, it is, uh, it is extremely efficient. You sometimes you do not have to uh, give for loop. So, it is uh, al almost understood without for loop, it is this. And uh, yeah, it is sci by the same thing functions. I think this is covered. Uh, what is basically uh, tensor is uh, uh, we will cover it. NumPy is basically uh, uh, a tool, and the, what is tensor? There is two tensor is there. It is the same thing which you can work on uh, NumPy array. You can only work on on uh, CPU. But uh, right now, probably you are all aware of that. Even your laptop also have a GPU that is a graphics processing unit. Most of the graphics is best handled. The leader is uh, in the in this process is NVIDIA, and in uh, laptop is Intel and AMD. I like Intel because Intel has so much developed. Like Intel has developed so much software packages to use it hardware absolutely. Uh, where we are. Uh, why you are going for Python? Python is only going for not doing for Android by the application, not based any uh, uh, single machine, uh, machine based application. We are learning Python fairly mainly for machine learning. That is my philosophy uh, because there is no use. Python is uh, four times, five times slower than Java, and Java is also slower than at least uh, five, six times slower than. Uh, C, uh, but why you are learning Python? It is the, we know it is the slowest, one of the slowest language. But why it's so popular? Uh, the main reason is for machine learning because the machine learning uh, you cannot use uh, any other languages. Uh, why? That is the main reason. If you can tell me, main reason is dynamic typing because even you know the C and Java. Java is uh, say C C plus plus is much better language than C. You have uh, object oriented features and very good, but Java uh, first time go to the integer must be 32 bit. This is the first time Java standardized, but C you have a various integer version, maybe 16 bit, 32 bit, but Java make it a standardization and, uh, but Java is uh, unfortunately at that time it was okay. James Gosling has decided it has to be static typing because of his static typing back, uh, and because of his, so you cannot be run time, it cannot take any. Uh, modification or runtime cannot change. So, that is the strength of uh, ja Python, it is a dynamic typing. So, at dynamic time it can be converted, but also it is a strong entity type that anything you have to convert, you have to convert it. Uh, uh, so, that is one of the thing and Python the APIs are very uh, good. So, it can uh, run and web basically in cloud, uh, Python works much better than uh, Java. Uh, and and that is the another thing at the python and machine learning you need a lots of hardware you you need a lot of hardware and that hardware is generally of uh, maybe two types or maybe three types one is uh, cpu based where you have standard von neumann type architecture you have a very uh, many registers in a cpu uh, may, uh, one stack and all these things and one and the longitudinal uh, memory that uh, you learn is a kind of a, a Turing machine concept. A Turing machine, uh, one uh, single tape, uh, read write tape, and uh, one box, a finite state machine uh, can go one step back or one step forward and uh, read and write. And that Turing machine can solve all the problem. That is the great thing of 1937 Alan Turing uh, is almost like a um, Albert Einstein like figure in 
computer science. Uh, in 1937, he in, he proved that that simple machine, one finite state machine, uh, can go one step backward, one step forward, and read write on a single tape. Uh, can solve any problem. So any problem uh, which have an algorithm uh, that can be Turing computable, and any problem which doesn't have algorithm cannot be solved. But that is a great thing. So uh, basically, our CPUs are our laptop CPUs are basically that finite state machine, and your RAM, 16 GB RAM or 8 GB RAM or 4 GB RAM, is a strip of a memory where the in the memory your code is also there, your data is also there your CPU runs over the code, learns, go to a particular state and uh, then go for data, it, it solves the problem and put it there. This is the typical architecture of von Neumann architecture. Mm, von Neumann has uh, worked on it and that is a typical CPU architecture, but last 5, 6 years we have a graphics processing unit which sometimes 10 to 15 times more, 50 times more if the, is the basically the data is uh, graphics compatible like most of the data is now image uh, audio text data video data that is 50 or 60 times uh, more performance with the gpu graphics processing unit like uh, around the 80s you have not born uh, 80s and 90s that is popular whenever i am uh, studied engineering in jadavpur university in 83 there is a call co processor uh, probably you have heard it's the 8085 886 and 8087 co processor the co processor handle numeric competition same thing handled in your laptop also you have a maybe i7 uh, uh, dual core or quad core uh, cpu and you have a nvidia graphics processing unit maybe with 4 gb 8 gb ram and other radeon graphics processing is also there the mem, uh, nvidia is there so uh, if anybody want to plan uh, uh, laptop nowadays i always suggest go for 8 gb or 16 gb with nvidia graphics so that you can have a gpu on your uh, laptop itself uh, so gpu is a great thing and gpu uh, cannot be uh, handled by not by numpy so that is the reason we we'll have to go learn the tensor tensor is nothing but a is a is a numpy which can work on uh, gpu yeah that's it so uh, numpy and uh, tensor we will cover not today's class in the next class because uh, tensor is uh, very popular for doing the machine learning okay so let's go to this next slide i think slide is visible please anyone yes sir thank you get it so so numpy yes, sir. Yeah, great so uh, this all these matrix operations this uh, numpy is excellent you don't have to explicitly for loop uh, this i have already covered in earlier classes uh, mainly statistical operation uh, only there are two uh, uh, language i have told about r uh, and i and python uh, statistical visualization whatever i know r is better but python is catching up uh, so in numpy can be used uh, so what i found the numpy basic advantage is you get a you can granularize your data you can you dictate the type of data unlike even more than a c array so various uh, more specifically you can say this is my kind of data the data will be there this is the advantage um, yeah i think i have done all this uh, this i have covered this is i have covered my earlier class please see this please earlier class i have covered yeah today i uh, will go to the code uh, basically the numpy all this bar graph histogram scatter plot we will see it box plot uh, it is very good interesting and here median and all this thing will be clearly visible sine a plot will be uh, 2d and 3d plot can be on numpy yeah it is line plot scatter plot histogram bar chart pie chart we'll see it in whenever we run the program in colab yeah it is a uh, uh, good thing how to imp import in the import matplotlib plus a plot and import sibon as sns the two package is there c1 is uh, much later uh, so somewhere c1 is more popular nowadays than matplotlib but i suggest you learn matplotlib first and then we'll go for c1 yeah this is a comparative between matplotlib and c1 let's learn at this matplotlib then we'll discuss in uh, next class uh, what is the difference between these two and why c1 c1 is uh, is more compatible for web usage and all
yeah let's go to the and uh, this is the package between different competition between r and python uh, python is for statistical modeling mainly and still it is the best now we'll go to the actual code please Is that visible? The code is visible. Should I make it higher? Yes. Sir. Good. I'll make it a bigger font. Is it visible, please? Yes. Yes. This sir. is. Yes, I, sir. I, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, I always prefer uh, this version checking. I think I, I suggest you also do. Like I always check uh, import matplotlib as MPL, print MPL dot. Underscore underscore version underscore. You can always check uh, this things one. And another thing, why I am using this collab? I think you all know what is the I Python, and it is a basically you are running program in a cell. Uh, that is the great advantage. So that in if you run in a any standard uh, interpreter, you have to whole program run again. Uh, but the cell oriented program, like in a typical Excel sheet. You you run program in a particular cell and run it in Excel also. This is the great thing of uh, Jupyter Notebook and uh, Google Colab. They copied it to into their Colab. So that that is the thing. You you run this code and you see the result, and then you run this code, you see the result. They then you run this code. This is so you don't have to uh, run command again. So you and first of all this shell, um, sorry, this cell can be shared. This program can be shared across users. I'll share it with you. So and also, so that is the great. And uh, most of the programs I I have taken this collab uh, comment line. I'll send it to it, you to you in uh, my YouTube video so that you can go to directly there and run the code in your Google Colab. Uh, so that's it. So, uh, but not always like here. I I should I should tell here also. So like try to do this print. NP version print print NP or oh sorry NP dot version sorry NP dot version. Let's see what happened. Yeah, great. So here also, whenever you import any package, you import NumPy as NP. Uh, so you, I'm just seeing is the NP version is well, that is always a uh, justification. It is uh, if it is it's it's not a silent program. So that's it. So but here this plot dot uh, underscore underscore version is not available. I have tried it uh, because not all thing have dot version dot underscore underscore internal variable. So here I matplotlib. This is the uh, x uh, dimension. This is y dimension, and uh, this I. I I I drawing a plot, a line plot, and you see the line plot is here. Mm, uh, see, this is a two plot. Legend is also there. Uh, hope so. It is visible to you. Uh, this is the program. Uh, import matplotlib and this X series, Y series. Whole program will be available. Don't worry. Uh, you run the code, and the whole code is taken from there. These also to be given to you. Uh, so this is it. You can get a good line graph, and we'll see in C bone might be a little better. I took the bar plot. Uh, this is the same thing. I took x one y one. I just run this. I labeled it by blue bar and green bar, and this is a beautiful bo uh, bar is given. That is, I think you will not get it in in your Java. So Java uh, graphics or C is a hell lot of thing affair. You you have to uh, graphics they really learn a lot uh, on spe machine specific. Uh, Java is good. Java graphics is much better than C. But this Python it works on any machine. That's great. Uh, so that's it. That is the reason you use a user interpretation is Python is very good. Uh, that's the bar is chart is coming. Then histogram. There's you can see the histogram is here. It's the black. Here we just say uh, where to say the histogram. Uh, just say this. I 
I just say plot hist. See, this is the actual command plot hist. Plot hist. Earlier was the plot, either the plot bar. So, plot bar is the bar chart, and histogram uh, it is the uh, histogram is coming. Hist, plot dot hist. Cumulative true, and uh, what is the bean size? What is the block size? 20 points. That is the histogram. The histogram is coming. Cumulative histogram, all is given. Another is scatter plot. Scatter plot like this. This is the direction the whole thing is scattered. You have to see the plot scatter x1, y1. This is the x1 and this is the y1, x2, y2, and this. And you just see plot scatter and uh, it will be marks with R or M. I think we should get it. I am just not giving much time because it is all obvious. You go these examples, uh, is already go lab examples. I will just try to cover. Well, it is interesting stack plot. This is I also come to know today actu actual name is stack plot. Uh, can you guess what is stack plot? Stack plot is plot like this. Like I think you, have, you all see this. This is name is stack plot. It is like the stack each upon other and you have to call this kind of plot by the matplotlib array adding uh, plot and it is a stack plot. You just say the plot is a stack plot uh, that is it. Okay. So, this is a stack plot, uh, this is pie chart, uh, this is a pie chart, you, you just a plot pie the section you can understand if you just see this a pie chart is is coming s1 s2 this a pie chart the simple command then comes fill and alpha example this is another type of charting fill of alpha and you have to write it plot fill between this is another kind of chart this is also uh, new to me uh, uh, please go there uh, this is different kind of uh, subplotting you can do the subplotting like mat matlab uh, this is a subplot plot within plot this is a big plot this is a subplot 1 subplot 2 subplot 3 4 this is it and this is uh, sin x uh, just see it i think uh, everybody have to forget the np range what is np range means you have to go for zero mean is 0 to 3 np dot pi and uh, up to increment is point, point 0.1. So, the you can get a range I think you all agree and uh, what is np dot pi there are several pi version in uh, python uh, maybe different package the same pi 3.1415926, but np dot pi means your naming scope is np. So, it is not uh, if you write only pi that will not work you have to say uh, which pi variable it is under the naming is the np you all know the naming naming i i already discussed in python there is a uh, is name is n naming is your first name is basically kind of your title but i should not be uh, tell about too much custom all this because uh, say it's like a title and first name comes after this so np is kind of a title np is the background yes and then you get a, di a di series of uh, data np data with np dot array range and you get how many uh, mean is 0 and 3 points three you get and uh, number of uh, points uh, separates from 0 0.1 and you want to get sin x so and uh, you want to uh, plot it so that is the plot uh, with the command is uh, this is uh, plot this is automatically it will give the command sign it is there mm, sign cosine and it is uh, this plot and you have to uh, say the label. Uh, so, you have plot dot x label those who have know the matlab uh, they know the plot dot x level is a x axis level quickly learn matlab it is you can get it online and matlab they basically all matplotlib is taking all the command from matlab. Okay. So, it is basically a poor man's matlab, uh, poor man's matlab on python is the matplotlib. Am I clear? Matplotlib, matlab is a license package, uh, but it is a costly package, but you can get a, a free user license, student license online 
and you can run and it is uh, if you want to solve uh, any uh, polynomial mathematical equation and all these things with a single line it is still better than python am i am i sense to what i am telling so if you are if you are in a in your mathematics uh, uh, differential equations and various uh, numerical solutions uh, you can do one thing you can program through python and uh, even the python which when takes a 10 20 lines with a single command you can do it on matlab okay so matlab is a very powerful uh, programming it is it is basically meant for scientists and engineers and all these things so uh, what the matplotlib is the visualization this whole thing thing they copied from matlab so that is the name it called matplotlib okay that i have told okay so this is uh, sine and cosine uh, is there uh, then i'll go for same thing i i'm not repeating uh, this is one thing i'm taking huge data and and this is now uh, i'm right now uh, right now uh, enough is there there you can get various kind of subplot and all these things uh, like on to do another new thing about the seaborn uh, so this is interesting uh, please listen everyone this is a another visualization software uh, import seaborn at sns sns set and you will see the plotting so this i am running this yeah the, it is a plotting and who and the matplotlib is gives this kind of plot and i think you will appreciate this is much better plotting so nowadays uh, most of the cases sns is a uh, uh, very useful package seaborn uh, seaborn uh, sns is a good package and i'll go a little about of seaborn yeah seaborn this is i'm using uh, yeah ma uh, same thing matplotlib i'm just seeing and then yeah the same thing here is a kind of data i am putting on matplotlib hope so this is the matplotlib and whenever you run it to seaborn the graphs will be like this graphs would be like this seaborn it is a uh, much sophisticated uh, uh, matplotlib is this one so there is a uh, matplotlib kind of little crude one seaborn is more professional looking uh, this is a software mm, another this is i have already shown this one one kd type of thing okay so uh, today uh, i wish to end here but summarizing i take five minutes to two minutes so for summarizing uh, today what we have done today basically what we have done the basic introduction to the uh, visualization of the data because visualization that is very interest is required because until you see the data in two dimensional screen or three dimensional screen you cannot decide so there the um, java and is very poor but python uh, great there so these all visualization tool matplotlib works on numpy so you quickly take the we quick, quickly for, uh, master about numpy and also pandas pandas you know is more powerful than numpy it takes as a data frame and uh, you have a column wise data uh, that is uh, more powerful than numpy and is built on a numpy this is a column wise you can do and uh, so numpy and pandas can be input and you can get a matplotlib and the seaborn uh, i am open to question